Good afternoon. Welcome back to BTN TV Live. I am Donna Aroldi. I am the Senior Editor for Transportation at Business Travel News. And with me this afternoon, I have Paul Grant, Global Head of Enterprise Sales for Get. Hello, welcome. Hi, Donna. Thank you for uh, taking the time out this Thank afternoon you for inviting to talk me. with us. I appreciate it. Um, I want to jump in. I mean, we know car rentals have been challenged with certain things, but um, what trends are you seeing from your corporate clients currently? So for us, I mean, we've seen a real shift uh, pre-COVID to post-COVID. I mean, a dramatic uh, uh, shift in terms of it's a supply chain issue. The industry that we are in get, which is ground transport, um, has seen a, a circa 50% reduction in drivers um, in the UK and actually that's globally. So 50% less drivers are available in the supply chain than they were pre-COVID. <clears throat> so you imagine demand is now coming back from corporates um, of varying sizes and it's really coming back quite strong for most. However, the supply chain is 50% down. So the demand is there, the supply chain is, is weaker so the, the current challenges for the corporates are that the demand is back, supply chain isn't there, so they are now really looking around and sourcing new options. Uh, Get perfectly positioned for that because we're actually a platform, so we are not the end provider. If you are just the end provider, an Uber, an Addison Lee, uh, someone else, that's all you are. You are, you are just the fleet providing the service. We um, aggregate multiple fleets, so we kind of de-risk that for the corporate. And um, what, uh, what is currently important for your corporate clients? So for them, it's availability, um, combined with, I would say, environments. So ESG and the responsibilities around that for a corporate have really risen. So they want to be able to buy an option that gives them the service. So service is still key and number one, but very closely behind the actual service offering is how can we do that in a sustainable way. The, the largest corporates that we work with in the world now have very you know, strong targets that they have committed to, um, to be, for example, net zero by often 2030. That's actually creeping up on us. That's only kind of seven and a half years away. So we have to be able to match that for them and help them transition into what they're looking for. So I'd say availability of supply of the actual service um, combined with an environmental ability to be able to uh, uh, procure that are the two core things that they're looking for. How, how are you able to uh, fulfill that for them environmentally? So for us, um, again, because we don't actually own or operate vehicles, we're in a, in a way a simpler position in that we are in a way like a TMC. We go out to the market. Uh, we don't, TMCs don't own hotels, don't own airlines. However, they have multiple choice. Um, and as an end user, I could choose a more sustainable hotel chain or a, a an airline that shows me the CO2 emissions. It's exactly the same now in the ground transport space. We have been able to, as our platform, been able to show and demonstrate an eco option versus a non-eco option. Um, so the supply chain is there. Uh, for example, the UK is probably the leading country in the world in terms of availability of either ultra low emission or fully electric vehicles. Um, so for that, it means that we can actually show those options to the end user and they can make informed choices. Are those options uh, the same as a regular rental or would it be a little more for, a, would it be a premium? There's no more cost as in we don't get, literally go out to the market, again like a TMC, they don't say how much the, the airfare should cost. It's up to the airline to set their own rates. It's the same model that we work on which is up to the fleet operator. If it's Lyft in the US, if it's um, a company in London, if it's a black taxi using Get, it's up to the actual operator to set their own rates. And then we show those rates to the end user. Um, so it's up to them. They, they do not, the companies we work with don't charge any premium uh, for using an electric vehicle. Okay, good to know. Um, what uh, policy changes are you seeing from corporate clients? We're seeing, I mean, we're seeing, I think, for us, we're definitely seeing that since you know the pandemic and since the complete change of user behaviour and the way that we live now, we generally are in the office, or you know the general corporate user is in the office maybe a maximum of three days a week, if at all, in some companies. So I think there's a lot more trust between employer and employee. There has to be. So I think policy has actually changed around that a bit more. I think I would say policy has become a bit looser, um, in a, in actually a healthy way. 
I think, again, the supply chain issue in the ground transport world means that where before a corporation was saying, this is our preferred supplier for ground transport, taxis, private hire, use this provider, they can't really do that now because the one provider can rarely now fulfill enough um, because of the shortage. So they, so the corporate has been, has been more, uh, uh, has relaxed their policy. So they're allowing more choice to the end user. Um, so policy has, has become a bit lighter as to what they can use. What has become a bit tighter is trying to push their users towards an eco option. So they are much stronger on eco first. If it's not available, yes, you can use another option. But often they will have to actually justify and tick a box to say, yes, I was offered eco, but I didn't choose it. So they, I would say that's becoming much stronger on eco, but more relaxed in the other areas around policy. And do you, um, what do you look at in terms of negotiating for your contracts? Volumes so or, or yeah, what? Yeah, negotiation historically was very price driven. It was right. very much volume price. I would say generally that even the largest companies in the world that use ground transport, use travel, they're only just seeing the, the ramp up coming. It's come up quite fast, but it's not back to 2019 levels anywhere between probably 50% and maybe 70% of what it was. For ground transport, that's what we're seeing from, from the, the end users. So I think two things are happening. One is they don't really know what the volumes are going to be and what they're gonna look like. So trying to negotiate on price is much harder for them uh, because they don't know what the volumes are gonna be. And secondly, when there is more demand than there is supply available, naturally it means prices doesn't mean they've necessarily increased, they have increased, doesn't necessarily mean they're, but it, it means there is less negotiation on price because if the supply is much more limited, you just need to get the supply. So um, for us, negotiation has been less about price, much more about service and actually availability. Can I get a car? If, I, if that you know, executive is flying to the airport at 7 a.m. on a Monday morning, they wanna know that that car is actually gonna be there at 7 a.m., not that they're, scared fearful is it going to show up is it not do i have to drive myself do i you know that's that's starting to happen interesting um what are your biggest challenges right now the biggest challenges are supply chain the so so the chain. the availability of vehicles and drivers anywhere in the world really the actual availability is the is the biggest issue we have the demand customers want the service we have plenty of customers that want to use us. It's getting those rides fulfilled is harder than it ever used to be. Is that globally? Do you see? It is globally. So it's in all your markets. It's, it's, it's all around. I would say the UK and US are particularly the worst hit. Um, I'm actually not sure why, but they are the most, the most hit in terms of uh, uh, supply chain issues, yeah. Okay. And um, what future development plans do you have for GET? So for us, it's actually growth. You know, even what I've just said, there we're in an amazing position. To be in a position where you've got more work than you can actually fulfill is actually a fantastic position and better than being the other way around. So for us, it's growing, carrying on growing the, the base that we have of available fleets in particularly our core countries, which are the UK, US um, and Israel but we're actually expanding our offering globally. So you will be able to use the same app web wherever you are in the world and get a, a taxi private hire executive car. Excellent. Um, can you share some of the places you'll be expanding to? Yeah, for us, we've actually seen really significant growth in, growth in Dubai. Mm -hmm. So the sort of Middle East region is seeing very big growth. I think a lot of actually people from certain other countries, including Russia, are actually moving to the region. Um, and it's meant that the requirement and the demand for corporate bookings has, we've seen like a 200% increased growth in that region. So that area particularly is strong for us and Central Europe. So uh, the core European countries, we are seeing big demand because we can see people are flying Eurostar, whatever, however they're traveling, they are going to Europe in quite a strong way. So the, the key European countries are, are, are very strong for us as well as the Middle East. And do you have any recommendations for um, travel managers as they're managing their ground transport right now? Yeah, I mean, I've worked in ground transport my whole career, so a long time. And this is the most upside down it's probably been so far. 
Um, and I wouldn't say things are going to change soon. I don't honestly see UK, for example, drivers initially left because of Brexit. So they went back to either homeland to another country. Since COVID, those drivers, because there was an instant drop, they've gone to work for Amazon or a delivery company, etc. I don't see them coming back quickly. They will come back, but it's going to take quite a long time. So my probably one piece of opinion, very strong opinion advice, would be not to put all your eggs in one basket. Gone are the days of you can have one supplier, count on them to fulfill all your demand. That is impossible. I really would spread your risk. And I like to think of Get, get for example, and people like us as a bit of an insurance policy. So we're kind of de-risking your risk of putting your, all your eggs in one basket. I would say that is, as a travel buyer, that's really what I would be looking to do. Great. Well, your insights have been valuable thank and your you. time. And I thank you so much for joining BTM TV. Thank you, Donna. Thank, thank you. you. Enjoy the show. Thank you.